The jury cast their votes for the winner. Now on Big Brother Cheesecake 7, Chocolate Heaven. Hello, I'm Andrew Shevsig Moonbez. Welcome to Big Brother Cheesecake 7 Chocolate Heaven. It's day 84 inside the Big Brother Cheesecake House, and Michael and Owen are the final two. Who will win? We'll find out tomorrow. And what will the jury say as they cast their votes for the winner? We'll find out shortly. But first, uh, wow, what an absolutely incredible season we have had. I want to thank everybody who participated in any way, shape, or form. The house guests, the finalists, the jurors, the pre-jurors, uh, all of the alumni, all of the fans, Extra Whip. Um, it's just, it's been, what an incredible season. I mean, really, the only sad part of the season was at the very end, where yesterday Brazil and Nicole announced that they will be leaving Extra Whip. Uh, so if you are interested uh, in joining me next season as a panelist on Extra Whip, uh, send me a message. I will accept applicants anywhere from season one through seven. Uh, you must be available Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're only going to be doing one of those a week up to the evicted house guest, but you must have the availability uh, of all three of those nights. Uh, yeah, but besides that, it's been a fantastic season. I'm going to rank the seasons, uh, which I do always in the second last episode very shortly, but I want to get to some other things real quick. So first of all, uh, I spent this past weekend with at Backyard Big Brother, uh, hosted by Kevin and Aton. Shout out, Aton played in season one at All Stars, and it is an even as a viewer, just as an alumni who comes back to watch, it is an outstandingly amazing weekend. The day after, which is today, always sucks because you have to go back to your regular life, and it's just oh, you know, like you're you're kind of taken like out of. Any of the problems you have in your real life are kind of gone when you're there for the weekend. And so if you live in Canada or the U.S. or, hey, you've, Callum Javier, you're willing to cross over the <laughs> cross the pond, which I doubt. But if you live anywhere in Canada and the U.S., it is so worth uh, the travel. Even though it's only two days, I will happily book a hotel room and spend the night with anybody who wants to play in a future season. Because it really is uh, it's just an amazing experience. Um, one little Debbie Downer that happened this past weekend. There was one boy there who was really, 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 really cute. And, of course, he was taken. Because, generally speaking, anybody who shows up to anything nowadays is either a girl or a taken gay guy. That's basically how it works at allergies. It's very, very, very offensive. Anyway, but let's move on. Um, I thought I told him to. I was like, you know, cut me a slice of you. But, anyway. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... Uh, where are we? So, the competition rankings, so I keep track of who's in the lead overall, over across all seven seasons, and I will say that the record was not broken this season. Steven and Jeffrey are tied with eight competition wins. Steven ranks a little bit ahead. He's number one because he had four HOHs and four POVs. Jeffrey in season one had two HOHs and six POVs. Then Michael is third with three HOHs and four POVs for a total of seven. Then we have JoJo in All-Stars, Season 5, had two HOHs and five POVs, total of seven. JoJo again in Season 3 had four HOHs, two POVs for a total of six. Uh, and then we have to go a long way down to get to Owen. We have Chanel with six, Rob with six, Karen five, Nick five, Curtis five, and then Owen is below Curtis uh, with two HOHs and three POVs. Uh, for a total of five. So that's the all-time cheesecake list, which I believe I put in the alumni chat. So if you need reference, it's there. Uh, Corey's like, yes, I have one win. Uh, okay, so this was, the jury has cast their votes now. It will be revealed tomorrow. Um, I can reveal, I don't want to give anything, I don't want to give anything away except 
I really did not know going into this vote who was going to win. And I am not surprised by the winner, but I think I'm surprised by some of the votes. Um, but that's all I'm going to say. But I really, coming into it, I did not know who was going to win. So I knew season one was going to be Jeffrey. I knew season two was going to be Chanel. I knew three was going to be Chantel. I knew five was going to be JoJo. And I knew six was going to be Steven. I was wrong on season four. I expected Lindsay to win five to two. And Rai Rai and Brenda both voted for Brazil to win, which I was surprised by. So Brazil won four to three. Brenda then 24 hours later says, I want to change my vote. Which, by the way, somebody this season, I'm not going to embarrass them. But somebody this season, 13 minutes after I locked in with the 10-4, said they wanted to change their vote. And I'm sorry, but the rule on Big Brother Cheesecake, since the very beginning, since day one of season one, is once I respond 10-4, it's locked. So, no, I did not change that person's vote. Um, so, their vote stands. But, yeah. It was interesting. So this is the first time when I flat out, I just, I don't know. I didn't even, I didn't even attempt to make a guess because I really, uh, did I make an extra web chat with Brazil and Nicole? No, I don't think I made an official guess. Brazil, you tell me, but I really, I wasn't sure. Uh, so I think both Owen and Michael totally deserve the win. I don't think this is a, a, a case where one of them is significantly better than the other. I think it's just a matter of who the jury credits more overall. Um, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go through next, uh, Miss Congeniality. So, unlike in past seasons, so Brenda in season four, Rhonda in season five, and Karen in season six were Miss Congeniality, and they all won, I believe it was, a th I think Brenda had $50, and the other two had $35. I took the prize away this season, sorry to the winner, because the prize, the grand prize keeps going up, I need to supplement that. Uh, there were three people that didn't pay this season. Uh, one was the, the person Rhonda donated, Rhonda from season 235. She won the preseason competition. She donated her key. Then somebody I gave a pass to for compassionate reasons. Uh, they were going through a lot. And, and then RJ just flat out told me tomorrow, 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 and I never got the money. Um, so because of all that, uh, there is no prize this season. Sorry. Um, but if we ever do meet in person, I'll, I'll buy you dinner or yeah, I'll buy you dinner. Yeah. Uh, okay. So getting no votes at all, Shawnee, not a surprise, RJ, not a surprise, Owen and Michael, they were in the final two. So not really a surprise. Uh, Ronnie was a bit of a surprise because he, the whole pro Ronnie versus anti Ronnie thing kind of happened because of him, so I thought some people would credit that. Callum was a bit of a surprise, and Cly was the biggest surprise with zero votes because she's, I, th I thought people would vote for her sort of as a troll vote. I thought as a joke people would vote for her. I wasn't expecting her to win, but I was expecting her to get at least one vote. Stephanie got one vote by Ronnie, which is pretty funny. Jenna got one vote from Michelle Nash. Shout out, Queen. Welcome back. I've not seen you in a while. I was hoping to see you, Michelle, at Backyard Big Brother this weekend, but she wasn't there. Um, Michelle Nash is just iconic. Uh, Rayanne got two votes, one from Bridget, aww, and the other was from Will Hare, whoever that is. And <laughs> Kilby, got, uh, Kilby got two votes from Justin Heinrichs and Jonathan. Okay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no comment, um, but nice to see Jonathan again, because it's, it's been a while. And Jonathan has been very nice to me, so I shouldn't be mean to him. Um, it's just so easy sometimes, I, so I don't know, I'm just mean like that. Okay, Kennedy got two votes, one from Brooke and one from Rhonda, 235 Rhonda. Um, Tom got three votes. I was expecting Tom to get a lot more than three, but he only got three from Andrea, Corey, and Kat. Brooke got three votes from Rob, Hearn, who was Brooke's biggest fan this season, and Owen, uh, which I'm debate. I was Owen. Let us know if that was strategy or not, because the second I saw you voted for Brooke, I was like, hmm. yeah. Uh, Javier got four votes uh, from Isabel Carballo, Owen, Curtis, and Bruce. Owen, you voted twice. Wait a second. Oh, Owen. One vote per person. You can't try and sway the whole jury. 
That sneaky motherfucker. Okay. Uh, and with a whopping 15 votes, Alexander River, Caitlin Coble, Nikki Philippard, Matt Desjere, Will Hare, again, okay, that shouldn't have counted, Arun Jane, Samantha Rentschler, Rob Bays, Stephen Lockridge, Karen uh, from Season 6, uh, Megan Espinosa, Rory Moore, Chris O'Neill, Jenna Matzel, Karthik Konak, the winner of Miss Congeniality in 15 votes is Bridget! Uh, while I wasn't expecting you to win, very, very well deserved. You were a fantastic person to watch. You were overall, uh, you were a great player overall. Uh, such a sweetheart. I, I have nothing but good things to say about you. You were recommended by Karen and Steven, who I guess were that was their preseason influencing. And we can joke about it now, can't we? And they were right to recommend you. Absolutely, you're a phenomenal person inside and out. So you are Miss Congeniality. If we ever do meet in person, I'll buy you dinner. Okay. No Morton Steakhouse, no Ruth Chris's, no hoity-toity Chef's Kiss five-star, you know, here's a salad for $200. Like, okay, let's let's Cheesecake Factory this shit, okay? Uh, although that can be expensive too, but anyway. Uh, okay, so well done, Bridget. Very well deserved. Okay, I'm not going to waste too much time on the season rankings. Uh, what I will say, uh, this season was phenomenal. Um, should we go from the bottom? Yeah, we'll go from the bottom. So better than season one, which is the worst season. Nothing wrong with it, but three people quit. And I, I was still, you know, growing pains. I was still learning. If you go back and watch the episodes, were like three minutes. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong. Chad and Charlene are what made Big Brother Cheesecake what it is today with their constant back and forth. You know, you're an old lady. Thank you, Chad. You're going to die soon. Thank you, Chad. Um... But yeah, so better than season one, better than season three, um, better than season six. Both three and six kind of had the same problem where it was very, very obvious who was winning and who was getting to the end pretty much the whole time. Like, there were no shocking votes. Um, yeah, so nothing wrong with either of those seasons, but that's why they rank relatively low. I put season seven... <sighs> Ooh. So next is season four. That's a tough one. Now, I will say season seven was worse than five and worse than two. So season five, which would have been the best season by far if it wasn't for Quidditch, it fell a bit towards the end. But season five is the best season by a hair over season two, which was full of drama all the time. Uh, and so was five. Five and two were just both iconic seasons. Um, so it's tough. Do I put seven ahead of four or behind four? I'm going to say seven is slightly ahead of four for two reasons. One, the first half of season four was a little predictable when the bus drivers were being targeted right off the bat. Um, there was no real wow moments in the first half. Whereas here, okay, granted you had RJ and Shawnee first, which were pretty straightforward, but from the Ronnie vote on, it was game on. And the game was on from week three pretty much till the end. Um, that was one reason. The second reason and this isn't really fair to season four, and I apologize, but I really feel like this season I maxed out and did my absolute A plus 100% on the competitions. Um, I don't normally toot my own horn, but I loved some of the competitions I did this season. Grand Game, I thought, was one of the favorite things I've always done, I've ever done, because I just love that game on The Price is Right. I loved Grand Game. I loved, uh, obviously, Mr. Universe. Uh, what were some of the other original ones? The chocolate, the beer pong. There was a lot of chocolate themed. I really, I really, season four was The Office, which is easy to get into. This season was chocolate, and I got into it with beer pong, with uh, Choco Land. Uh, there was another one that had to do with chocolate. The Jigsaw Cafe, I loved. I always loved that competition. And uh, there was something else. There was another one that was chocolatey themed. Let me open it because I'm, Gonna, I'm going to uh, lose my mind if I don't remember. But generally speaking... Oh, Chocolate Milk! That was another iconic one. Uh, and a little election of horrors, which had chocolate in it too. And just, I don't know. I even liked simple things like the Eliminator, where it's on Zoom, and as people were getting eliminated, they were asked one by one to, to leave, and that actually created suspense 
by watching her, and, and the virus as well. One by one, people were leaving the Zoom. So I just feel like this season, the competitions were just far and above beyond where season where I was in season four. Um, so it's close, but I'm going to put season seven ahead of season four. So the official season rankings are five, two, seven, four, six, three, one. Uh, so once again, so season four is still the middle season. Five, two, seven, four, six, three, one. But even season one is a great season. I, I'm very, very happy, especially with how shitty Big Brother US is. And even Canada has had a couple bad seasons. I mean, I thought nine was kind of boring. I thought I hated six, sorry to say. Um, I've done seven seasons and I don't think there's been a bad season. And uh, maybe I'm just being cocky, but I genuinely think we don't have a bad season and we don't have a bad winner. We don't have any Andys or Steves or Paul or Nicole. Well, Paul didn't win, but Nicole or Jackson. Like, we don't have any abhorrent people who have won. So, so yeah, I think Season 7 was a big success, and it is the third best season, which is pretty good. Okay, before I get to the jury votes, because, of course, I'm running on. That was one negative. I really have to learn not to talk on and on and on. But that's another reason why this season ranks so high. You, the 16 of you who played... Gave me a lot of content. I had a lot to talk about, and it was very easy to get to 20 minutes. In past seasons, there's been times when I struggle. I, I, I'm getting ready to film, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to talk about today? It was just Lynn being Scottish, and the other people were just blindly following Chantel. Like, woo! Like, I had no clue what to say. And in season six, it was the same thing. Mbop is dominating was the theme for four weeks in a row. So having a lot to talk about shows what a great season this was and all stars was the same thing and season two even though the episodes were shorter i had a lot of drama to talk about so when i have things to talk about it makes i think it makes me happier and it makes the episodes better and yeah so that's where we stand okay i'm going to quickly talk about what's to come next season i have not yet decided whether season eight will be in will be a winter season or a spring season but definitely not fall because I need a break. But sometime in early 2023, could be winter or could be spring, we will have something that I don't think has ever been done before. Not in an org, not in LRG, not in Survivor, not in Big Brother. It's going to be controversial, and I don't fucking care that it's controversial. You want to cancel me? Cancel me. I had 322 people watch one of the episodes. I was like, what? I don't even know 322 people myself and 322 people watch, so go for it. Try to cancel me. Are you ready? It's Big Brother Cheesecake 8, Political Bait. And here's how it works. This season, or next season, four crazy MAGA Trump-loving conservatives face off against four loony Trudeau cock-sucking liberals versus four Bernie Sanders social communist NDPers versus four crazy, quacky, quirky Bloc Quebecois wanting to separate and form their own tree-hugging government. Four political parties, four opposing views, and one goal. To survive an 85-day power struggle and win an $800 cash prize. After a season that was promised to be the most twisted season yet and didn't really shape into being twisted at all, this season will definitely be twisted. Why? Because with politics comes new powers and comes with one interesting thing that you will find out in the new year. The words head of household will have a whole new meaning. Also, which political parties will join together and form a coalition government to try and oust uh, the other parties? Will somebody use the first ever coup d'etat, or as Jeff Schroeder likes to call it, coup d'etat, to overthrow a tyrannical government? She met Allison. I'm not coming. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not coming. I need you to come. I need you to come to the diary room now. So please do that, okay? Shima, I need you to come. I'm not coming! Shima, I came in on a Sunday. I need you to come. And not just that, but... Like in this season, past season, the public will have a chance to influence, Kat's favorite word, the game. And there will be other twists as well that have not been mentioned. But I will say, unlike in past seasons, keeping your word may be 
to your benefit somehow. But all in all, four political parties will battle it out, and for the first time ever, I'm doing the four verse four verse four verse four twist, where the parties will be predetermined prior to the start of the season. And even better, all of your political favorites will be lending their voices to the house guests, from Donald Trump, to Bill Clinton, to Barack Obama, to uh, Hillary Clinton, to Justin Trudeau, to, I'm missing one, uh, George W. Bush, and, oh, Jean Chrétien, and my personal favorite, Mitch McConnell. The events of January 6th were not at all impressive. It was very, very bad and reprehensible, but I vote Donald Trump not guilty because I this will be controversial, but it will also be dramatic as fuck, and I cannot wait. Who will succeed? Who will fail? Who will start a cunt calling session? And who will be the apprentice, I mean winner, of Big Brother Cheesecake 8 Political Bait? It all premieres in 2023. So yes, very, 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 very excited for this. Uh, I cannot wait. Um, yeah, I, I cannot wait. That's that's all I can say. Uh, the competitions are all done. The twists are all done. You won't find the idol again. And that voila. Okay. <laughs> so, now we have... But before we get to early 2023 and Season 8, we got to finish Season 7. So, jurors, you have now heard from Michael and Owen, and it is now time to give the power back to you as you cast your winning votes. Reminder, do not pull a topaz because you are voting for the winner of Big Brother Cheesecake 7 Chocolate Heaven. Uh, if you pull a topaz, that's on you. And once I say 10-4, that means it's locked and you cannot come back 13 minutes later and say, I want to change my mind. Okay, is everybody ready? It's time to get to the winning vote. Callum, you're up first. Hello! It's me, Callum, again! Isn't this so exciting? I can't wait to rocket back into outer space with all the chocolate loot I have. I'm voting for this player because they have proven their loyalty to people in the game, and I respect that. Thank you, Callum. Bridget, you're up next. I'm voting for the best non-endure player in the game! Have a great day! Thank you, Bridget. Kennedy, you're up next. Oh my god, I'm so sad I couldn't go to Backyard Big Brother. I wanted to go to Backyard Big Brother and I contacted Kennedy and Kevin Aton, but then I couldn't play. And then, oh my god, and I heard it was so exciting. There were so many cute boys. Oh my god, I love cute boys. But then, uh, we were okay. And then, uh, again, taking this sort of unreal. But anyway, so here I am. This is so exciting. We made it, we made it, we made it, we made it. We made it. Oh my god, day 84. Ah! Okay, here we go. My reasoning is I'm voting for the person who I want to see win. Thank you. To be clear, she said, I'm voting for the person she wants to see win. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> anyway, thank you, Kennedy. Oh, and I'm not going to fuck my vote up again. Thank you, Kennedy. Brianne, you're up next. I have finally gotten over my divorce with my horrible ex-husband, Robert. I'm finally in a better place. I'm so happy. I'm in a beach house. Where's my drink? Anyway, I'm voting for this person because I'm a little bit biased because I talked to this person more and this person took the time to get to know me better. There. Goodbye. Thank you, Rayanne. Ah, uh, Javier, you're up next. My darlings, it is me, Bruno Canaloni. Now, I would do another dance for you, but I'm going to be back next season. Oh, yes, are you excited? I'm going to be back, and so I will teach you more dances like the Viennese Waltz, the Salsa, the Jive, the Quick Step, all of those fantastic dances. Uh, so look for me back next season. In my eyes, you both play, and there's going to be hip action, my darlings, hip action. In my eyes, you both played the same game. It just came down to who adapted the most at the turn of the tide. Thank you, Javier. Brooke, you're up next. Oi! It's me, Mel Brooke. This is fucked up! I'm a juror again! I should be in the finals! As difficult of a choice this is to make, you both deserve to win the season! 
I'm voting for the person who played 0.001% better! Thank you, Brooke. And finally, Jenna. Mm, this is so exciting! I love both of you! Mm, it's not like the last few times Joanne played where she was fucking pissed at somebody and she lashed out. Mm, but that was fun to watch. Mm. So I'm voting for the per this person because they worked hard and shit. Speaking of shit, I have to go take a big, big shit. Mm. Thank you, Jenna. Jurors, you have now cast your votes, and there is only one thing left, which is to find out who won. So, with that said, Michael or Owen, who will win Big Brother Cheesecake 7, Chocolate Heaven? Find out on the season finale tomorrow. I'm Andrew Chesik Moonves. Take care, and we leave you as we eavesdrop on the final two. Good night.